Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am joined again today by Professor Ben Nicholson, who is the lead author on the upcoming Headstamp Publications book, Clockwork Basilisk, the early revolving firearms of Elisha Collier and Artemis Wheeler, talking about the guns that really were the origin of all modern revolvers. Mm. So uh, the Kickstarter presale for the book is currently ongoing. We have a bunch of cool different options and accessories offered along with the book. So if you're at all interested, take a look at the description text. You'll find a link to the Kickstarter campaign there. And what we want to talk about specifically today mm. is sort of the process of research. Because mm. you didn't do this by yourself. You mm. had a whole team. Absolutely not. And no. I thought it'd be really fun to find out a little bit about the team that was involved. And I'm sure you have some fun stories. You basically went Indiana Jones globetrotting for college. I did. Yeah. So well, let's talk about the team, and then I'd, I'd love to hear you spill the beans on some okay. interesting experiences. Some, some moments. Well, um, you know, I, I was an academic for all those years, and when you teach, you do research with students. And students are 19, 20, 20, you know, up to 30 sort of thing. It's like working with a pack of hounds. <laughs> You're not going to hit the fox, they're going to hit the fox. Okay. So uh, uh, when we were looking at research on, on the uh, path of, of uh, revolver history, someone said, well, what's this? Like, what's this thing? Like, there's a thing called a collier. And of course, I thought, hmm, that looks interesting. And uh, so uh, we decided with the students to uh, build a collier Okay. With their architecture drawing skills. Okay. They, 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 they were not design, They were not in design. They were in architecture. So yeah, what kind of class is this? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I was teaching at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, okay. which has to be the most uh, liberal anti-gun organization. Not organization. Not, not the school I would immediately think of no. for a history of revolver design. No. If I'm going to be completely honest. Well, it was called. Uh, uh, guns, myth, and manufacture. Okay. And there was a lot of pressure not to do this class. And we would go back and forth and back and forth. And being a great art, art school that it is, uh, they tried to accommodate it, and it was okay. difficult. And then I was looking at for paintings in the Art Institute, which is our sister organization, mm -hmm. the Art Institute of Chicago. I was looking at, I don't know, Canaletto and Caravaggio or something like that. And then I came across Colt 1911. I thought, oh my god. <laughs> they actually own a gun they, collection. They have a gun collection. Not only a gun collection, but they have semi-automatic uh, 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 pistols at the, at the Art Institute. I thought, oh, this is going to be interesting. So I went through and you know looked for all of the other weapons, the Borchardt, I mean, all of them, and hmm. they had them all. They were uh, 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 you know, very nice collection. Of course, deep in the vault. So at the next meeting, I said, well, how is it that my students can go and look at semi-automatic uh, uh, pistols and every kind of revolver that you could imagine, and you won't let me do the class? And that was, that was it. Nice. So, uh, you know, there's always a way. All right. <clears throat> so, so mm. getting back to her, the research, um, you started off working with your students. Yes, yes, yes. And, and then... Um, uh, well, actually, the curator at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago Farms Curator, Jonathan Tavares, he put me in touch with the patron saint of this project, and I will say his name, uh, Gary Friedland. Okay. And he uh, uh, I, uh, said, oh, very interesting. I've had colliers. And, and uh, do you know Frank Graves? And I said, no. But he said, you have to talk to him. And so uh, I was put in touch with, with collectors, and we would bounce off, and it began by, do you know where this is, and do you know where that is? And then we would like say, well, let's talk to so-and-so. And by the end of this dance, uh, we have a, an extraordinary group of people. Frank Graves has uh, a, one of the great colliers there is, and uh, one of the finest collections of 19th century new in-box firearms. It's a beautiful collection. Amazing. Does not mess around. Uh, and then uh, another uh, uh, a person is Matthew Schneiderman. And he, he likes, he's actually like a little bit like yourself. He likes really unusual things. 
Okay. And and uh, but a little earlier than yours, basically uh, goes up to the uh, 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 cartridge. Okay. Um, yeah, he he loves uh, uh, percussion cap, early percussion cap history, and anything quirky, or we couldn't work out. That's Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you're definitely qualified. <laughs> <laughs> And then we uh, were introduced to uh, Jonathan Ferguson. Now, mm -hmm. Jonathan Ferguson is uh, a, a mid-career gun enthusiast, the curator of firearms at the Royal Armouries, who have, have the best collier collection in the world. Okay, that's and sort of to be expected, To I be suppose. Exactly. And uh, in British, of course. And um, he was the first one who said, yeah, let's take one of these things apart. We'll, we'll have the armorer get in there with a screwdriver. He just ripped it apart, as armorers do. Completely unsentimental. Oh, I've met their armorer. <laughs> Completely unsentimental Not is sen an excellent description. <laughs> <laughs> and for uh, the, the um, museums, the, the, uh, particularly the military collections, mm -hmm. the inside of the firearm is probably more important than the outside. I mean, okay. they're kind of the same, but there's no difference. So the private collector... If you get a ding screw mark, uh, mm. that you've just dropped twenty thousand dollars value, or I don't know, one thousand dollars, whatever it is. But you can't do that, right? But with a military collection, well, it's part of the deal. Yeah, it is a working <coughs> reference collection. Absolutely, in many cases, so. absolutely. And we will talk about that uh, uh, okay. later. Uh, and, and and then and then he uh, introduced me to uh, David Williams. Now, David is now the president of the Arms and Armour Society in England and massively knowledgeable as an engineer. And uh -huh. he, he will go into the Royal Armouries and take apart uh, a number of locks um, that it, he suspects were made through interchangeable parts um, methodology mm -hmm. and measure everything to the thousandth of an inch. <laughs> okay. So he has been key to this project, as everybody has been key to the project. It sounds like you've got quite the cool it, team. It, it, it's like, I mean, I don't know the names of the big bands right now, but it's, it, it was like the Beatles. You know, you had <laughs> every kind of person. And then the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, John McLean is from Australia, and he is uh, a very big enthusiast of the history of cults in Australia and weapons in Australia and a demon for newspaper research. Hmm. So he was looking at uh, uh, where the collier went in ships' manifests around the world. <laughs> and, would find, and would find, he said, Ben, this looks interesting. A, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a uh, shipment of colliers in Tasmania of uh, four to a box, uh, and, and, and it's a wooden box, tin-lined, and this is 1829, right? I mean, you got to love it, right? That's fantastic research. So, yeah. we, so this team, you know, we've we've we work so closely together, and dare I say, probably every day there's an email going in one direction or another. And for people's reference sake, how many years have you been working on this project that turned into? It? <laughs> you know, the first moment of any act, it's like a glance across the room at your future wife. You know, you know that moment. But uh, 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 it, it was, um, it's going to be in the classroom. Okay. Yeah. How long it's ago? Gonna, five when, years, uh, okay. five years, around the five years. Okay. Sure, sure. That's a quite respectable period to be working on. Well, one yes, very yeah. specific subject. It, it is. Yeah, it All is. Right. Yeah. So you must have had some, some fun experiences tracking some of these down. Well. Let's, let's spill some beans. <laughs> At the beginning of the project, <clears throat> I was already fascinated by America's firearm culture. And, uh, you know, when you're a professor, you get another kind of entrance to museums, i.e., come on in. What day do you want to come in? And only in retrospect do I realize that that's not everybody's privilege. No, it's not. Even for an, uh, 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 you know, deeply knowledgeable collectors, you just can't phone up the Smithsonian and they'll say, yeah, we can fit you in on Thursday. So I have academia and, and uh, the, deep, the, deep, uh, the deep liberal state for this project. <laughs> it would never have happened without it. Isn't That's that ironic? You know? Very ironic, yeah. <laughs> but wonderful that it allowed it. Happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, it all fits together if you take advantage of it. Um, so um, I made a journey around America, and I visited 35 firearm museums. That means into the bowels. The okay. one or two that I couldn't get into the bowels of, 
but basically um, uh, I was looking at America's firearm culture. And every museum I would go to, I said, there's no chance you've got a collier in there, is there? And they would say, well, actually, we do. <laughs> and in, in one case, uh, a, a museum in Nebraska, uh, they have a staggering collection. No mm -hmm. one knows it's there. And they have one firearm in, in, uh, out on display, which is a like 1986 a uh, big uh, 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 golden boy, you know, rep, repro, wow. right? <laughs> and yet down the basement, the rarest collier that exists. Wow. Two of them, huh. apart from other things. So um, uh, that journey was going on, and then I started to branch overseas, and I have visited five different countries um, in, in New Zealand, okay. uh, Australia, uh, France, the United States, England and by Zoom Canada because okay. I couldn't get across the border. Mm -hmm. So the guys up there, they said, hey, let's just do it uh, remotely. Uh, so it's been a very big project of travel. Now, obviously, on the way, you find incredible things happen. I'll say that my favorite was uh, in, they're, they're all good, but uh, it was in New Zealand. <clears throat> so I go to the Otago Museum. Okay. This is in the South Island. It's a small town, uh, you know, with a long history. Now, New Zealand had a, uh, a, a, a uh, the, the British w had a tough time suppressing the indigenous peoples, really difficult. And um, they had a firearm in there, a collier, long gun, hmm. uh, that belonged to Bloody Jack, Chief Tawaki. And Bloody Jack, uh, he uh, was from the North Island, spent a lot of his time in a war canoe and was extremely capable tactician. And uh, at one point in his career, um, he went over to Sydney, and we know at the time that he went that there was a shipment of colliers that were <laughs> coming to Sydney, uh -huh. and no doubt he brought one back. Okay. So um, touching a, an artifact from uh, the indigenous people in, in uh, New Zealand is, is complex. Okay. So they had to find the great, 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 great grandson of Bloody Jack. So uh, he was brought to the museum, and uh, the press was there. It was like a big, wow. big event, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the museum handed him the uh, firearm, and then he in turn handed it to me. So it was legit. <laughs> It's, on the one hand, it's kind of ridiculous that you have to go through that process I'm to, not so, to no, study I'm, an item in a museum. But yes. on the other hand, but this that is the right really way to cool. do it, right? You know, if you're if you're going to go through protocol, this is the right kind of protocol. Now, see, if I'd been him, yes, the great 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 grandson, sure, sure, I'd have waited for you to finish and then taken it back <laughs> and gone home. That's right. <laughs> this, is, this is actually my family property. Yeah, here, sure, and I'll be keeping yeah, it now. Yeah, right. That's that's funny. Yeah. Well, you know that would have, that should have but, should have would have happened. They would have been on the front line, the front page, uh, sure. rather than page three. No, just the idea of I can picture a you know an indigenous. I don't know if that would be Maori, but Maori, Maori, yeah, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. war chief with a friggin' repeating collier. Uh, yes, heck yeah, that's cool. Uh, I mean, an, a, another uh, another moment, like a, a, a golden moment. Um, there's a firearms dealer in uh, England. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. And um, I had figured out that he had one of these things, and, and uh, he was going away for the weekend, and I was driving in from London, and he said, oh, look, i tell you what, why don't we meet on the M25 North Circular Road, and uh, where the A1 comes in, there's a Starbucks. <laughs> and, and, you know, traveling in England with a gun under any circumstances is serious. Doesn't matter how old or having you, you, a gun in England is, is a fraught state of it's affairs. It's hugely fraught. So he said, "Black Mercedes, black darkened windows. I'll meet you outside Starbucks." <laughs> so I said, "Okay, fine." So uh, you know, we met, and uh, we both uh, got into the back seat, and then the the uh, like the where the pimp stool is in the middle is like a, 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 a the, the gun was laid out like this, <laughs> and he had a screw set a set of screws screwdrivers and we just tore the whole thing apart, uh, under these circumstances, and then put it all back together again, and nothing happened. Nice. Yeah. The so, most interesting thing that ever happened in that store. <laughs> <parking lot. laughs> yeah, it, it made you feel like a, a, a like a doing a big drug deal, right, I, or, a, or a, 
something like that. I've and had some experiences like that. Yeah. Never quite as interesting as a collier, but yeah. yes, it is a little bit surreal. Right on the edge. Yeah, yeah. Then um, uh, uh, there was a, a, a what you call a wall hanger, which is a, a weapon that only the uh, Cody uh, dugout gun museum <laughs> would want. That they would actually okay. want. They would look for a gun like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, you know, that someone had uh, drilled and screwed uh, a, a bolt through the barrel to make oh, sure it all went oh together. Uh, the, the, all, all the, 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 it had been converted horribly to percussion by someone just hacking into it, right? And uh, you know, I, I had never spent more than two thousand dollars for a gun, which is actually don't tell my don't tell my wife because <laughs> you know we don't do this is between us, right? <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I could go up to that price. I couldn't go any further. Even at that kind of condition, it's pretty questionable if you could get a collier for that money. Uh, well, good point. Yeah, I mean, and, and it was a regional. Uh, it was not, you know, it's not one of the big sales. It was, you know, okay. somewhere that was not a little dinky well known. Option kind of thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, kind of thing. Well, maybe you can get. It. <laughs> could have done it anyway. It went north of my price, and uh, so. Uh, uh, our friend, uh, <laughs> uh, Joe, down at uh, IMT, I said, Joe, you know, this is a really important gun. It looks like hell, but it's super early and very, very, it's a clockwork, clockwork collier. Okay. Which means that uh, you wind it up and the thing takes care of itself thereafter, which was very big deal in 1818. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, hey, they get it. Right? Okay. They, 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 it goes up to, I don't know, three or $5,000 and, and it's in their collection. Now, IMT is a, uh, a, as we know, it's a no-nonsense collection. Mm -hmm. This is not an art museum. They right. do tanks and machine guns, and they have a massive uh, uh, facility there right. uh, with art, like mil military armorers. Yeah, right? this is associated with Knight's Armament. Right. And a huge tank collection there. And yeah, yeah. yeah, all, yeah all of that. Is... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and um, so they get it, and I said, any chance that you could uh, take it apart because I want to see what's inside. So they call up like a couple of days later and send photographs, and they've just tore it all apart and sandblasted the whole oh, thing. Sandblasted? <laughs> yes, sand, well, probably walnut shells. I don't know what it was. Jeez. But there was no more rust anymore. Okay. So, okay. so it was a gun that had like a lot of active rust and actually benefited the, from this, I hope? No, it, Oh, it definitely benefited. Okay. But in my point of view. Okay. But um, for someone who's interested in rust, they probably uh, <laughs> would disagree. But the, see, the, the dug up museum is no longer quite so yeah, interesting. Yeah, if, if they had, well, they wouldn't be interested, right? So why would you have one that's uh, had the rust removed? So um, uh, there's an example uh, of um, all sorts of ways of collecting. Now, did they. <clears throat> Was it interesting on the inside after mm. they did all that? Okay, did anything so, show up? Um, well, um, the, the uh, person who didn't like it or, as it as it was had had taken a hammer and chipped off all the teeth of the of the ratchet wheel and it, all all the innards were stripped out, uh, and IMT took the, literally the whole thing apart. And there was the lock plate, mm -hmm. and on the lock plate beneath the rust was S knock. Really, Stamped. Samuel Knock. Samuel Knock, the big, huh. the big, the big dude, the Brit dude himself. So for the first time, we had a maker. Fantastic. Yeah, oh, a that's gun awesome. maker. Yeah, it was a very, very, uh, very exciting it's time. Something to be learned, even if the gun is in abominable condition. Sometimes. Yes, and uh, you know, as a researcher, you, you know, it's like being a poker player. You can't break character. You, you, you know, if someone says, "I've just, uh, yeah, we've done, we've done it." and we've sandblasted it, you can't say, oh my God, <laughs> why, why did you do that? Because uh, you say, oh, okay, fine, uh, could you send the pictures? And uh, th then something happens, right? With research, you cannot be preju preju prejudicial. Okay. That is the one thing you cannot be. You can't presume to, to uh, uh, find out what it is you think that's inside. You have to just go into it. Completely open-minded. Anything could be in there. Completely, completely open-minded, and and be an observer. This is all about observing. A keen eye for detail, and and anything that's not right, you 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 check it. Anything, and and uh, then you get there. Yeah, fantastic. And you have gotten there. 
because the book is actually now going to be printed. You yes, finally hit yes. that point where you get to stop writing it yes. and go, this is my complete work. Sure, sure. And we are ready to send it to the printer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, even working with uh, Head Stamp was a project because actually Nick called me like three years ago. He said, Ben, I hear you're doing a project about <laughs> the Collier. And, and uh, I said, oh, yes. And I looked online. And Head Stamp had, hadn't done any books at that point. And I thought... Going with a publisher who's <laughs> never published a book. Oh, <laughs> and I didn't even realize Nick had, ta- had been talking to you that early. Long time, <laughs> right? But he's a Brit, you know, and, and you know, there's some simpatico there. And uh, so uh, after I had been rejected by absolutely everybody, um, uh, 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 Jonathan said, well, you know, you talk to Nick. Let's talk to Nick again. And he's, he was just right there. He says, yeah, of course, you know, it's, it's, it's the project. We do this kind it's, of project. It's everyone else's loss because this is exactly the sort of it, thing that we want Headstamp to be doing. Uh, 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 but I'm so glad because the quality of that book, I mean, I just got my copies because of the, the uh, uh, flow of uh, um, the ships mm-hmm. carrying the books around. And it is, I mean, I like quality. You're talking about Thorncraft. Headstamp. Mm-hmm. You're, yeah, you're not talking about... Clockwork Basilisk, because we haven't actually, it hasn't come off the printer well, yes. because we're still running the pre-sale. <laughs> but, uh, but, but you see, in my mind, it's done already. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were talking about copies before. Uh, Nick has made dummy mock-ups of the book open at the page that I've been wanting to look at. So it's there already. You know, In my mind, it's there. Wonderful. Well, if you guys wanted to have it there in your own library, Obviously, take a look at the description text. We have a link to the ongoing Kickstarter. Uh, we have standard versions. We have signed versions. You can get a professor here to sign it himself for you. Uh, and we have a limited number of collector editions, as well as all of our standard uh, extra cool accessories, uh, Ex Libris labels, bookmarks, and so on. Yeah, so Yes. And, 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 of course, we're going to print the uh, 1818 drawing. So it you can actually fair. build your own collier with this drawing. There we go. All right. Uh, check out the Kickstarter, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the talk. This was, I think, really cool. I really appreciate you yeah. sharing some of the, the secrets from the Indiana Jonesing around the <laughs> globe, searching for colliers. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. Yeah.